Hey guys, so I need to make some arrows. I've um I've made three already, but as it's a time consuming process, I figured it'd be a great opportunity to post it, show how I make the arrows, and to give a little update of what I'm doing channel wise. Uh, these are bamboo. Love bamboo. It's fun to see. Bamboo. I wonder how many people got the reference. Anyway, uh, making an arrow. Uh, the ones behind me are pine. And you want pine and cedar shafts and you know, pretty much shafts in general to be as straight as possible. But bamboo is not technically a wood. I think it's it's a vine or it's a, a vine or grass. Someone told me, I should probably look that up, but um, yeah, it, you want the bamboo to be as straight as possible, but it's not a big deal if it is a little bit squiffy. I've, um, I've bought bamboo arrows that have had a little bit of a, a kink to them. They've been a little bit out and they've still shot beautifully. I love making bamboo arrows, it just... It looks, it, it just, it looks nice. So I've got these big, I think they're, they're Chinese feathers with a, a, a golden thread wrapped around. Now, there's no adhesive on the thread just yet. Um, I'm going to do that when I've made them all. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the look I'm going for. I've got three made already. We up. And here I've got the bear shafts. Self knocked, that's. So you can probably tell there is a dip about there. Uh, yeah. So if this was pine or cedar, um, I would either sand it all down make it thinner and uh, make it a lot shorter. But as it's bamboo, it is slightly different, but then that kind of art is a little too much. So I won't be using that one just yet. Maybe I'll, um, I'll use some of the excess and knock it up and shoot just to see something that degree of, of, of um, arc in it, see if that works. But this one, this one seems pretty good. We'll start with this one. So, uh, feathers, tape, scissors, bamboo. And when I'm all done, uh, I will be using this. It's just standard thread. You can get it from sewing shops. You can. I ordered 20, 24, 25 different colors of these from eBay. It cost me like two pounds, three pounds, something like that. So, you know, I mean, this one alone will do many arrows, many, many arrows. And I don't just like to use tape. I know some people use a combination of tape and glue, you know, just whatever works, but I, I prefer to use tape and then thread it. I think it looks nicer at the end and just, yeah, it's just nice. A little bit extra. So, loads of feathers. Now, these were labelled as left wing feathers, but it doesn't hurt to check them. And really, it's um, it's really really simple. You hold the base of the feather to you, and if it goes left, it's a left wing feather. If it goes right, it's a right wing feather. It doesn't really matter in any major sense. 
if you've got left wing or right wing feathers on your arrow as long as they are the same so don't put a left wing when you've got one right wing feather or two right wing feathers make sure they're all right or they're all left <sighs> tea mm. <sighs> all right let's crack on oh, i meant to do that yes okay so channel wise as this is quite tedious and you know might be able to multitask um it makes sense really to spread out i mean the end goal of this i would love to be able to travel the world shooting in different countries different styles of archery seeing different styles of archery and cooking in different countries using traditional ways of cooking and you know, generally just mixing it all up so the best way for me to do that really is to spread out and get on as many different platforms as possible so these videos will also go on vidme if you're not on vidme then Come on, where you been? Go, 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 go. I'll, um, I'll leave a link down below to my VidMe profile channel thing. Yeah. So you can follow me there as well. But um, the, the other reason of, of going on to VidMe is the whole demonetization of, of everything. So I... Um, I follow Jacqueline Glenn, who's having a lot of issues with uh, demonetization on, on her videos. It may seem like I'm struggling to speak, and I am, because men can't multitask, despite my earlier ramblings. But uh, when you put the tape on, I found this is the best way to put it on onto the feather first and then onto the arrow you want to make sure it, it's nice and even and level and goes across perfectly because if it doesn't do that then when you put it onto the arrow shaft it parts of it's just going to come away from the shaft which means when you're shooting the arrow you know if you're lucky enough to get that far it's, it's just going to come off which is it's really poor quality if it does that, that's no one wants to see that. And I take a fair amount of pride in the arrows that I make. I mean, I've said it before, a well-made arrow is worth more than a well-made bow. Because you can have a, a basic, a basic cheap bow, like the Core Pulse, which is about 60 quid, I think, at the moment. Yeah, about, about 60 quid. And, you know, that, that bow will last you forever, you know, if you want. It, it's a good bow. It's really cheap. It's a really good bow as well. But a bad arrow, there's there's no excuse for a bad arrow. But, uh, yeah, there we go. I'm happy with that. With a little bit of, of overlay at the base. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, a little bit of overlay just there. Uh, the reason for that is when I come to use the thread, it's just that little bit easier. And I'll use one bit of thread and I'll go around the whole thing and then I'll use the adhesive at the end, a little bit of glue right at the top, but only really at the top. So uh, yeah, there you go, that's that. What was I rambling about before? Ah, yes. I remember. Yeah, um, the whole algorithm that uh, that YouTube has, and this is this is also affecting some of the gun channels as well. Uh, it flags up as inappropriate, so they can't make, uh, so they're not getting advertising, so they're not making money, which you know it. It's a little bit balmy, and it's really annoying, and it is affecting a lot of people. 
not affecting me. I mean, my channel's tiny. I don't make money anyway. But as a little bit of solidarity to all the people who depend on YouTube for an income, you know, VidMe is the competition, and it's not really a bad alternative. Now, from from my standpoint personally, um, if you've looked at my videos, I've I've got cooking videos on which I'll probably do another cooking video after I've made two or three arrows and when I can fight back the anger enough to make a political video I will cover the news and politics um, where I am at the moment I can't really categorize that on YouTube but on VidMe I can so you know it's it, it's a lot easier for me to do it on VidMe in terms of organization Okay, so right, this bit. Generally, I like three fingers from from the edge. I think three fingers works, but I mean, realistically, you can you can have it down here, up there, or you know, wherever you wherever you want. Um, there is someone uh, I was talking to on Facebook, and he uses the feather as an anchor point, so it's. There-ish, I think, which is you know quite far down, really speak realistically speaking. But I like three fingers. Now the eagle eye, mind you, will see that I'm not using an arrow jig. I have one, but I just I can't get on with it. Every time I've tried to use it, there's just been so much hassle it's just it's either not worked or it's buggered up my feathers or you know something silly like that so all of my arrows are made wedged into something right now it's wedged into my sock so it can stay there but uh yeah not necessarily The arrow jig, because it just doesn't work. Alright. Okay. Knocking point there. So I want my first feather, which will be the cock feather, to be as in line with that, because that is how I base the rest of the feathers that go on. So it'll be that line. Yep, happy with that. Bit by bit, slowly put pressure on while I'm putting the rest of the feathers on. Try and put the feather on as straight as possible. It's not always perfect because a lot of the feathers that I've that I've bought, they have that natural curve and they, they want to curve. So this one has kind of curved a little bit. It's kind of the bottom is, is sloping more towards me, but it works. It will shoot fine. It's not a major issue. There you go. First feather on. See, making arrows is very simple, but um, it's also very time consuming. Um, there's 12 behind me. In fact, there, you go. Yeah. there we go, this is better. So uh, these are the, the pine arrows that I made. Um, these took three hours from from start to almost finish i say almost because um i'm not going to self knock these i i need to sand the the edges down a little bit so i can put on a push on knock but yeah from from start to get go this took three hours to do six of these with 
fairly good steel tips. And again, the red ones. Not as happy with the red ones. But, um, you know, again, three hours to, to make six. So it can be very time consuming. It's not difficult. It's just if you rush it, you're going to cock up. And you really don't want to cock up on an arrow because you couldn't take that little bit of extra time. Oh yes, we go slow. We go slow. Which is why so many people buy arrows instead of making them. Plus, you know, you've got the whole grain thing and length and working out all of that. And especially if you're making like the arrow from from scratch. I mean, I've I've cheated a bit because I ordered the the bamboo shafts already knocked, which you know it's a time saver. But you know they're already strong enough, and I ordered the pine shafts for the other two arrows, so that's already done and sorted for me so what I'm really doing is putting them together and just checking that the um, the arrow shaft is straight I'm not saying every time you order uh, they'll be straight because they're not um, with I think three of the blue ones I had to, um, to sand them down so they'll go for a slightly lighter bow than the red ones will but uh, the red ones I might just keep for decoration. Or maybe I'll keep the blue ones for decoration as well. Who knows? But uh, yeah, there we go. I do like arrows. I do. They look, they look cool. But I have to admit, I'm not a fan of aluminium arrows. Uh, when I did have aluminium arrows, they weren't really suited for my bow. So they were... I think they were knock left by quite a bit. And they were a bit too small as well, really. So I, I was short drawing and just... Yeah, just no. Just no. Just no. But generally speaking, you know, when you when you shoot an aluminium arrow, you lose some of that energy transfer. I know you, you lose it generally anyway, but, you know, if I'm putting, for argument's sake, if I'm putting 40 pounds into an arrow, I don't want it to, to, to translate into 35 or something like that. I want it in there straight away. And aluminium arrows, you know, the trade-off of them being tough is that it does lose a little bit of, of the strength. The strength? Of the strength. Now I'm rambling. I'm a little sleep deprived. There we go. There we go. That will work. That will work. Yeah. So, yeah, if you do ever buy arrows from me, because eventually I'd love to have a little shop where I am just smashing out these things. This is how I do every single arrow. It's all eye coordination. I don't get on with jigs at all. I'm, I just I don't make good arrows with an arrow jig. Oh, that's much straighter. Wunderbar! Two feathers already. 
If this was a movie prop, this would be ready by now. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to skip the third hour, uh, the third third feather, and uh, go strip straight to the binding for you. So I'll see you after I put that on. Okay, so three feathers on. So uh, yeah, this one's a little bit squiffy. Yeah, this was quite a bit squiffy. But, you know, it, it'll fly. When I, um, when I do these, if I've got one or two when I've done my six, because, uh, you know, when I order the shafts, I, I get about 15 shafts in one go. So I've got the ability to mess up one or two of, or if i'm just going to sell six then you know that's that's enough but uh yeah if i do mess up a couple of where they're still nice and they still shoot nice but they don't have a quality that i'm 100 percent happy with you know one that i would happily buy then i just keep them they get thrown into my mix of arrows that I will use when I do silly things like go out to the middle of a field and shoot at targets. I'm not entirely sure I can actually hit. Oh, that chopped really well. Yeah, yeah. You know, and a bad thing about these, um, kind of rambly videos is I'm not entirely sure if I've covered all the points that I wanted to cover if I've given all the reasons why I've gone to VidMe if uh, I've said about the, the category system which is just easier on VidMe really can't remember so uh, yeah you know if you are on my channel just for the food, then uh, the food videos, the cooking videos, probably stop from this channel. I may open another channel, uh, but uh, on the, the VidMe, on my VidMe channel, they will they will stay. But I can put them in different categories, so it's not a major thing. It's just a little bit harder on YouTube. There we go. Slowly. Very slowly for this bit. When um when you're threading up, it's obviously it's important to do it the, the same way with with all the arrows. So the, the thread is going from the left to the right on these arrows and if I'm going to do six if I'm going to do 12 I'm going to do 20 odd whatever then all of them have to go in in the same way they all have to go from the thread going left to right spiraling up otherwise it just it looks weird when you've got the bunch and there's just that one or two that are different but also you don't want to overdo it when you are spiraling because it would just look weird. So this bit is probably where it takes the most time. And it's happened a few times where I've got fairly towards the top or I've got right towards the top and I've looked at it again and it just doesn't look quite right so I've come all the way down which is another good reason why you don't want to put adhesive on or any types of glue on until you've got the threads to where you're happy with it so nothing's drying while you're mucking about with this Go. 
push it through the feather right the way down to the bottom before you go into the next rotation probably the best word for this there we go Nope. Higher. There we go. Yeah, so this is why people buy arrows. Because it's just time consuming and irritating. Ooh, can I get that last bit? Good. Yeah, I think I can get away with that. Okay, so right at the top. Now this one, uh, when you do it at the top, make it fairly loose because this way you can wrap it around and when you're happy with it, which I will be very soon, because it's fairly loose, you can just push it down bum, 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 bum. okay I've got a knot in my thread just like that and then tighten it up a little bit while you've got it there There you go. Done. The only thing extra I will do is when I've got my my dozen that I'm happy with or my half dozen, I will then put a little bit of glue around the top, just just brush it in. I'll put a little bit of glue on the uh, the inside of the feathers around here. Tiny, tiny little bits, you can't really see it. And then a little bit along the bottom here, just for that little bit of extra stick. So yeah, that's that's it. That's how I make an arrow. Oh, and uh, arrowheads. Yeah.